Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. It was a mega weekend, particularly if you like Formula One, which was at Spa with F2, F3, Porsche Super Cup as well. Uh, there was NASCAR. There was, back in the UK, there was uh, British touring cars and there was also British superbikes. And actually, before we even go on, let's talk, uh, mention Colin White, Mike Brown, Dan Jones. Pretty horrific crashes in Janetta and in the superbikes, um, all hospitalized. Yeah. And uh, best wishes are with uh, all three of them for, for a recovery. Indeed, absolutely. Never like to see people injured. That was the, well, that, the structure crash horrendous. And the, the, the bike and the bike at the mountain was a shame. One might have fell before in front of Dan, and Dan just hit, came over the mountain. You know, there was a bike in front of him. But uh, at, yeah, at, anyway, at, at Cadwell Park. But let's kick off um, uh, Formula One. And well, there's, there's no stopping Max. It's uh, it was a it was a, it, was a, it was the Max show for sure. Doing it on his home ground as well. I was there. I was there. So I was part of the Orange Army, and it was just this supreme domination. You know, when I mean, we all thought when he got the grid penalties that you know he went back to sixteenth. In fact, it was pretty much 14th because both, both Alpha Tories decided to start from the pit garages for some reason. And Did then, they do uh, that to help Red Bull? Did they do no, that? No, I don't think I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to help Max. I mean, those two cars, I mean, they were just supreme. A lot of people were talking about the. I was out in the spa this weekend, so I was in the grandstand and going around the paddock and listening in. Um, because they had this new tightening of the regulations where the uh, Formula One to have this oscilla- oscillations mustn't achieve more than a certain amount of bounce. They're bringing in this sort of safety rule. Uh, people with Eau Rouge, the big dip, I think other cars had to raise the ride heights just a little bit to stop the cars smashing into the ground at Eau Rouge. Whereas it just seemed to make the Red Bulls even better. You know, I think Adrian Newey, I think, I think we all know now that, you know, Newey's influence with these ground effect cars. Uh, the Red Bull is just by far the best chassis, and it, it was just cruising around that. And actually, the circuit was made for an aero, you know, because it's very high, fives, high speed, slowing, but also a lot, a lot of straight line. And we all know the Red Bull with the Honda engines are quick in a straight line as well. Um, so they're quick through the corners and quick in a straight line. And he was just slicing past everywhere every time we came. I think the, the Dutch crowds in the Grand Slam they applauded every lap, even when he was about twenty seconds out front. Every time he came by, oh. oh <laughs> Yeah. I was a great atmosphere with that. But um, when, when one, someone dominates a race, you know, the average spectator thinks well, it was a pretty boring Grand Prix. Yeah. Well, it's a boring season as well now, isn't it? Because we're all clinging on to the hope that Charles <laughs> would give him a bit of a run for his money. But any chance there was of that, Ferrari have, have made sure that they've scuppered any chance uh, of Charles winning uh, anything at all. It's, uh, it's the Max show. Max, won, <laughs> Max has won nine races. The record, actually, in the season is only 13. So it looks yeah, like the records can be yeah. broken. Um, Poor might... Sergio, I remember how Sergio must be a thing. He was just blown away by the, you know, he, he straight he followed Science early on and didn't really have the same pace. But he eventually got by Science to make it a Red Bull 1 2. But uh, he was a lot slower than the, the other man in a Red Bull car. But even but, even, um, even with the qualifying tip, you, 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 it makes you realize just how good, how brilliant. Max Verstappen, yeah. yeah. But according to the atmosphere, because the atmosphere was great, but the atmosphere wasn't all great, as, as, a, as I'm now established on Twitter as the man from Simpson shaking my fist at the cloud. <laughs> this boom, boom music that they're bringing in, Liberty, you know, this show business. Um, it was actually the Porsche Super Cup race in the morning, which I was watching as well. I mean, we're all the, everyone's there. And, and until they waved the flag, all the Porsches were on the grid. And until they waved the green flag for that last lap before you start the race, they had the boom, boom, boom disco man going. There was one lyric, which was fucking, fucking, fucking. This is a family. I know, you know, DJs are popular at events to hype up the atmosphere, but try to do that. You really, that sort of lyric, can you not pick other? But the, the annoying thing to me, as shaking my fist, I mean, all the cars are there. I mean, you want a little bit surely of racing build up. Let's have a, you know, a Porsche grid. You know, the championship is and qualifying in 15th because he had a bad qualifying lookout for car 22 that's going to be coming through the grid. You know, there are all these people that maybe have never seen a Porsche race before. And they just gave them no information at all. I think when they waved the green flag, and I was down at the first corner, I think they then started reading the grid because I couldn't hear it because the cars were going in front. I mean, I know it is the modern way, but it, I mean, 
Every I, one of the over about twenty six was probably a bit pissed off with the yeah, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I would be, I would be as as grumpy as you, shaking my fist <laughs> in the cloud as well. Because I mean, you know, get an atmosphere going, great, but. Yeah. Particularly I know. with the swearing, you, you know, you take. I've had Oliver on this uh, podcast before and on videos. Eleven years old, I don't want him hearing that. He probably no. hears it everywhere <laughs> now. Day. Now is he? We should. We're a family podcast. We shouldn't be yeah. repeating those. You things. shouldn't have been repeating it. But, and, it's like you know, we're going to have tennis before Wimbledon, or maybe the cricket. They should have a DJ now. They're doing it a bit in that one hundred uh, uh, cricket series, but not yeah. sort of you know just twenty minutes of non-stop Ibiza boom booming. Um, before the green flag lap. Anyway, anyway. but anyway, okay. the point I was about to make that the rest of the race, the Formula One race, having said it was boring to the average viewer, there was a lot for the connoisseur, the true racing enthusiast, to see going on. And I actually enjoyed the Grand Prix, you know, where probably the most of the boom boom Ibiza people were falling asleep in their in their paddock clubs. <laughs> let's go, let's go to qualifying. Um, and we just said that Max was just just completely dominant. Yeah. Um, he didn't even go out on his last stint because there's no point because he's going to be starting towards the back of the grid or, or yeah. in the middle of the grid as it, as it was. Um, Ferrari, so so Ferrari in their wisdom sent Charles Leclerc, Leclerc out uh, to give Carlos a toe and they put new tyres on and, and he said, what are these tyres? <laughs> what are these tyres? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, they are the same. <laughs> it was just that the whole world felt really awkward for oh. For Ferrari and, and they went on to haunt him in the race because then he came in to try and get the fastest lap which was just a whole calamity right yeah we saw that happening race. we saw that happening but they put those same tires on which are now used tires I don't know whether that had any any effect on on the fastest lap but well no we couldn't because he came out Alonso was ahead of him exactly. Alonso we but then he got the toe with Alonso lane. he got the toe with Alonso uh-huh. going past the Rouge but but the whole point is he sped in the pit lane five second penalty <laughs> and ended up losing three points <laughs> it just goes the pain goes on and on and on the pain goes on and on but you know in the race watching George Russell you know tracking down the sites you know I read in the, in the news today that you know he had two bad laps when he just messed the tyres up but you know so that was a great feature of the race I mean George I mean he held off I mean, he held off Leclerc. Leclerc just went backwards. You know, he seemed to be slower. I know he was held up by the visor strip and he's braked up, so he had to pit for tyres earlier than the others. But he was like a non-entity, non-entity in the race. Um, and, and, of course, we had, we had Lewis. Lewis out They didn't quali- qualify quite well, Mercedes, so they gained a lot of pre- positions. But they were slower again, weren't they? not getting closer, despite George's efforts. And as for... Lewis's overtaking manoeuvre, I mean, it just beggar belief. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. that He he gave Alonso like half the track. I don't know what he was thinking for someone of that calibre. And of course, Alonso's on the radio, stir, which is classical, which is sometimes why I don't like Alonso, because I think he thinks he's bigger than, every, he's the biggest person in the paddock, you know, and that's a classic Alonso comment, you know, about a, a fellow driver that you can only lead from the front or whatever it was. I, don't, I can't remember the exact things, but... But yeah, terrible error by Lewis. Yeah, I mean, it, it um, was an error, but but you know what? He did you did you see? His, did you see his clothing? He's the dress he wore in. <laughs> oh, did you see it? He looked like a Care Bear. I'm sorry, Lewis. I'm a the big balaclava fan. Covering looked, his, it was with pink. the flower on the he top. Like a, all... he, he looked like a Care Bear. It was uh, quite <laughs> incredible. I, mean, I love Lewis for being his own Max. I think mean, yeah. that's what we're all we're all fed up. The corporate racing driver that just does the corporate. The speed, speed speaking, but sometimes I wonder what's in Lewis's head. Well, I especially wonder what was on his head at the weekend. But um, but the other great thing about the race, Alonso was quite fun in the bit. Ocon made that amazing double pass going up the straight when he caught. Uh, who did he go by? Um, Gasly and Gasly and Vettel in a, in a twin pass, in which he got up from sixteenth on the grid to seventh. So he had a good run. Um, so that was interesting. But the best of the best, the drive of the race was Alex Albon, who was in, in charge of the, the only uh, big DRS train. It must have been the last 20 laps. He held off uh, the likes of Ricardo. I think it was no stroll was behind him most of the time. And it's always lovely because the commentator said there's a DRS train without explaining why you get a train. Because if you think about it for two seconds, you think, well, surely the second person in the train could overtake the car at the front of the train. Otherwise, then why is it the train? And these trains only happen when you've got a car like a Haas or a, or a Williams that doesn't have such good aero, therefore it's slow around the corners, but not having such good aero has less drag, therefore it's quick on the straight. So that's why you get, it's only these DRS trains can only happen when you get a very fast car 
uh, in the front of them. But he just drove impeccably to not make any mistakes, to get that one point which to Williams means so much. Well, do you know, and in the, in and the Alex Albon behind, as well. Sorry, I was just going to say, and Alex yeah. Albon as well. Um, he did something in qualifying that means so he made it to Q one of qualifying. Yeah, he got that's also yeah. I forgot because, about qualifying. You said so that yeah. means that all twenty drivers this season have done that. That's so him. Doing that means all twenty drivers now have been uh, Q three. Yeah, which is, yeah, which is good, that's isn't it? cool. It is cool because it just shows that other than Max dominating, it's it's pretty wide open. It's well, it's not wide open. It's not talking <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> but We're talking that train, getting back to the bad <laughs> news of the weekend behind Alex Albon in that train, not just Lance Stroll, but both McLarens, both McLarens stuck behind. I mean, I know. Um, Lando had a grid penalty. He was also the grid penalties and Ricciardo. Ricciardo, what, about ninth? You've got the grid there. I don't know where he actually started, Ricciardo. Yeah, but what an awful race for McLaren. They were just not in the game at all. It's funny, and, isn't it? They, they're, they're just yeah. so hit and miss. They're either on it or they're not. But yeah. and of course, all the controversy with McLaren, I think it's probably a good time to mention that now with Oscar Piastri. Yes. What's going on? Alpina, it's there now. I mean, we're, we're recording this quite late on a Monday evening. It's yeah. there, the committee now. Um, the contract, the contract uh, decision is happening today. I don't think we get an answer for two days. They're sort of saying, uh, but so much going on now in the driver train because you know, the, you know, Alpine. If Alpine win and they get Piastri, most people think they won't use him. And other team bosses are really disgusted with what Piastri said. You know, when he said, you know, I will not be driving. You know, for a young driver to do that, I think the management company, Mr. Weber, is in charge, and someone went a bit wrong there. Um, so he's really lost so much respect, I think, in the whole Formula 1 paddock. So, but they're now saying that if, if they win the case, they can now sell him to McLaren. So if McLaren have signed Piastri. It almost sounds like Alpine can sort of name their price and say, right, you can have him for 100 million or something. I don't know. Do you know, um, do you know that happened with Jensen Button and he went on to win the World Championship? The, the year, as he wanted to leave Braun, didn't he? Yeah, Go he somewhere did. else, was that it? And they wouldn't let him. Yeah, and then he went on, he went on to win the World Championship. Because now they're, now they're saying Alpine are after Gasly. Because I, th- I think um, Ricardo's going to get shut out. Ricardo's, oh, I'm bored with little Formula 1 bubble. He's saying, oh, I see my future in Formula 1. You know, I don't see myself outside of Formula 1. They love being in that little bubble. They don't, don't Le Mans. I mean, just, IndyCar, they'd love you, Ricardo. They'd love you out there doing stuff. And why not go somewhere you can love than going back to the midfield and another two years of Formula One. But well, it wouldn't um, even be midfield, would it? He's struggling to be midfield in a good competitive well, yeah. car, the McLaren. Yeah. It wouldn't even be midfield if he came back. I don't think. But now they're talking about Alfred and Gasly to Alpine. And then now they're talking about Alfred Tauri or Red Bull in particular and trying to get Colton Herter maybe. Because I think a lot of people want an American driver coming over. And Herter's much hyped out in America. So Herter could go to Alfred Tauri and um, I don't know where Piastri would end up then. So it's it's all kicking off. And it's wouldn't it be all funny? Very interesting. Wouldn't it be funny because we've been massive fans, advocates of getting um, Piastri into Formula One. Wouldn't yeah. it be funny if he ended up without a drive? Just well, I almost hope he doesn't. Teach you a flipping yeah, lesson. Yeah, I almost exactly. hope he Well, it's not him though, Tiff. It's his that's his management it's team. My he's a young, my he's a team. kid, and he doesn't yeah. deserve to be taught. He does. He does deserve to be an F one. But I know exactly what you're saying because I think the same that the management yeah. team. Um, should be taught the lesson, but 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 not him actually. So let me but tell you something. I was else. worried about that. Just go about that Domenico. I was worried about this, this twenty car group Domenico. I was really. I'm mean, so disappointed with he's now COF one. No, isn't he? And coming I out with that. Agree with you. And he, and he said women. There'll be no women for five years. You know, and I, I agree that's probably true. But he didn't quantify why. You know, because we have to look. Anyone with a racing thing can look now through Formula Two, Formula Three, Formula Four, and there aren't any girls capable yet. Of, of being a Grand Prix. I mean, it's the way quite he said an it, arrogant yeah. statement, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, because this, we are happy with 20 cars. We we think we think Formula One wouldn't be better with more cars. It would be amazing why? with it. I can't, Andretti. Why, why yeah. this Andretti elbow? They've all got their money now and they're all this little pot. They don't want to give any money away to any other teams to join. And it, for the sport, you know, for the you know true enthusiast, it's a it's a real blow, you know, the slap in the face to think that we're gonna we're stuck with 20 cars because that's what you want. We're stuck with four Middle East races because that's where your money is. We're stuck with three American races because you're an American company. And you know, it's it's for for an old-fashioned um, man shaking his fist in the cloud about the sport <laughs> that I've loved and followed, you know, for 40, 50 years I've followed Formula One. 
So yeah, there's a lot about I, it. I'm still. I pretty would upset love about. to have Andretti in that one more one more team yeah. of two cars. It wouldn't yeah. make a difference. Well, it would make a difference. It would make a positive difference. It would be amazing yeah. to have it on there. Yeah. Um, so so four t- four countries in the in um, the Middle East, and you got three races in America, and Spars is being confirmed again Spars. next year. That was the best one more. Only one more year though. You know, so they, the place looked magnificent as well. They 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 done the recard. They painted the. But actually, they painted the runoff quite nicely in the Belgian flag colours, which looked really good from a distance. And uh, so, yeah, the place was one. It was buzzing, you know, and the, and the orange army were letting off the orange flares. And uh, it was a great spectacle and a, and a fantastic, just to have been there to see such a, an overwhelming demolition of, of everybody else, including his teammate. Yeah, good stuff. OK, so can we move on um... Should we move? Yeah, on? of course. Sabora, you go four and twos, four and threes. Just, I mean, the reverse grid race um, wasn't won by the tenth qualifier, <laughs> who therefore got pole position. Uh, Bosch and the Swiss guy finished third, but it was it was a Kiwi Aussie weekend because um, Liam Lawson came from fifth to win the reverse the sprint race uh, with Aussie Jack Doohan going from seventh to third. Then Jack Doohan won his first sprint race, a first feature race win. Uh, doing one from fifth on the grid, a really good drive. So I'm now campaigning, if, if Alpine, because he's an Alpine junior, so I'm saying, right, if Alpine want an Aussie, don't have Ricardo <laughs> back, don't have Piastri, because he doesn't want to drive for you. Give a jack to it. Take a jack. I mean, in the olden days, there would, you wouldn't be concerned about putting someone that's won a Formula 2 race and won two reverse, but you wouldn't think twice about giving them a Grand Prix chance. Oh, he's a rookie, you know, we need manufacturer's points, he might crash the car... I mean, it's just depressing. I'd put Jack Doohan straight in now. I put him in. I put him in over Ricardo all day long, all day long. <laughs> so Liam Lawson was third in the feature race. They had a really good. The, the two of them were on both podiums, so that's quite unusual. Uh, with Bosch on, as I say, Bosch on the sprint podium, and a Drogovic finished second in the main race. This Brazilian Felipe Drogovic walking away with the Formula Two Championship, miles out in the lead. Any gossip in the Formula One paddock? Anything anybody even thought of giving Drogovic a test drive? No, it doesn't all, fit, really, does it? It's all about fit. the money. It's all about the money, fit. honey. Well, our only British driver in Formula Two, Oli Coulbon, was banned, unfortunately, for point, got too many points before Spa, so he wasn't even in the field. Ah, but Formula the, the Three is a different done, story. We had Tatiana Calderon back, though. So okay. for the women, but she qualified right at the back. Best result was 18th. But at least she's out there. Way, yeah. waving the flag for some women. But yeah, Formula 3. Now, that's where we've got the British talent coming up. Um, because I'm from Zach O'Sullivan actually was on pole for, for the reverse grid race, but he faded. I don't know why he ended up 21st. There was a few shunts going on, so he didn't have a good weekend, Zach. Uh, but Ollie Behrman finally came through from fifth to win his first race. Um, and Johnny Edwards came from seventh to fourth. So those two other Brits, the two Autosport Awards, uh, the main race, well, Ollie Behrman was third and Johnny Egg was fifth. So a really good weekend for the young Brits. The feature race was won, another good story, by Barbadian, Zane Maloney. He was actually the British Formula 4 champion in 2019, I think, so he came over to the UK. Um, and he had a huge shunt in the reverse of the sprint race on the Saturday. Big shunt. He rolled over, I think, with the other car. One of them had a big rollover, but they, they fix these cars overnight. Yeah. You can't. I saw, I saw. So he was second on the grid. Um, pole man was Chow Collette, the Brazilian who finished second in the end. But uh, yeah, so Zane Maloney got his first win. Good story. Uh, Oli Behrman got his first win. Good story. And uh, Formula 3 at the moment is quite a, a good hotbed of young talent for the future. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. You say young, they look weird. You know you're getting old because you look at these and they literally you just uh-huh. you don't even look like they're out of school. And that's and that's a compliment um, uh-huh. to, to say that. But let me just go back a little bit uh, for those of you that watch in the UK. So we have the commentators on Formula One: Crofty, David Croft, um, Paul DeResta. You know these guys. They got quite a bit of stick over the weekend on Twitter. I don't know whether you saw any of that. Tim. No. Yeah, they're saying that Crofty just uh, set, just non-stop sprouts off rubbish. Stats, stats. Yeah, and, and doesn't really know what he's talking about. And uh, um, but I think people are getting a bit fed up with that. And Paul DeResta, has, has anyone ever seen him smile? But then when you think about it, when you think about it all those commentators, even um, uh, Brundle, not, none of them really smile. They're not really that type no, of engaging. No. Whoa, the doer. Like you. The doer. It's a bit dour, but yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> what are the commentators like in whatever country you watch in? Let us know below. Uh, anyone famous? Any ex-Formula One drivers, <laughs> maybe? Um, so, poor Super Cup. 
What he has happened? still no draw. Harry King. We're waiting for Harry King's first <laughs> win in the Super Cup. Uh, but he was on a good hot qualifying lap, I understand. He got bought right at the final chicane. I'm not sure where they think they would have put him on the grid, but he ended up eighth with his first lap and uh, actually lined up behind the other British driver, Lorcan Hannafin, who's a really good young driver as well. Um, Harry got by Lorcan in the race. They finished fifth and seventh. So Harry's running out of races for that first win, but um, he's winning on the Benelux. He's won every race in the Benelux Championship, which is based mainly at Spa and at Zandvoort. So Zandvoort, maybe next weekend, Harry King. But it was a good one. The, the guy out front just jumped. It was Harry's teammate, leapt to the front and walked away with it. So they're a bit nose to tail. The Porsches can't overtake very easily. <laughs> Overtaking's hard in motorsport these days. <laughs> Unless you're in a catering. NASCAR. It's a bit of a... Well, I haven't seen it. I've already read the race, story. wasn't it? But it, it ended up being on the Sunday. What, what was all that about? Was it... Rain, was rain, rain. I tell you what, if you want to talk about climate change, which I don't debate or make comments on at all because I don't want to get into trouble with any... <laughs> but the number of NASCAR races and IndyCar races this year that have been postponed through lightning golf as well. It seems to be more and more lightning postponed golf events as well. Anyway, the you know what I think it is? I don't think... I don't think the, I, I, look, let's not talk about climate change. I'm not saying the climate isn't changing, but I think... It's more health and safety than anything else. Yeah, I think it's that's, that's yeah, the no, thing that's getting stricter. But the trouble is they then didn't run on the Saturday night when it should have been. So they ran on the race on the Sunday and there was the usual chaotic odd crash or two. But then <laughs> right towards the end, there was rain all around. They're trying to finish the last 22 laps off. The drivers were in uproar, uproar because so they, they all didn't. Had, all had um, wet tyres on. Slick. No, no, slicks. You don't what? have, a, there's never any over. Said, what? <laughs> you don't have <laughs> and wet tires on an so never, ever, ever, ever you have a never, wet ever, tires ever, 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 ever. Wow. The range you stop. Do you get a dry line? Oh, okay. So, so okay. No, so you stop. You stop. Wow. I didn't know So that. the organs, I think, were a little bit naughty because everyone knew these clouds were closing in. And anyway, it apparently drizzled on the on turn one. And they're all just coming 200 miles an hour flat out. And they all hit the drizzle. And they just had the biggest shunt they could ever have. I saw the shunt. I didn't know that's what caused it. <laughs> yeah, the, the top 25 were all damaged and off the road. They're then waiting because they're desperate. Because this was the last race for this yeah. who qualifies for the top playoffs. 15, yeah. So there was still a big fight because there was still really someone won it that hadn't got enough points. They go through and then there were the two with the most points. So they wasted about three and a half hours, I think, to eventually redo the 22 laps with all the wrecks coming out, hobbled around and patched up. And um, it was, in fact, was won by um, the three Austin Dillon. So Austin Dillon, by winning, he pushed Sindrick off, just shoved him off at 200 miles an hour. And Sindrick after said, yeah, that's how it is. You know, boy, I, I knew he wanted to win the race and I got tapped and <laughs> they accepted out there. Um so Austin Dillon won it, and Ryan Blaney, who was way out on the points after the big crash, or before the big crash, recovered enough points to be the only man in on points, um, leaving Martin Truex. Martin Truex is sixth in the points, but is the only one not to get through of the 16 to the playoffs who hasn't won. So Blaney gets through without winning. But he's fourth in the points, so he just hasn't won this year. So, so we now what, start. We now what start. What happens now with the six. playoffs? Tell us all what happens. So now it's, it's three rounds, and then you knock four out, and then three rounds you knock four out, and three rounds you knock four out. So that's three batches of three. That's nine races, and then you end up with only four that can still win it. So that goes to the last single round, and the first finisher of the four is the champion. But well, how many have get, a points champion as well? They do they have not, a points champion as well. So when they knock these people out, you can they, they still have other they still have other cars in the race because I'm co I completely oh, no, the whole agree. grid the whole okay. grid's running because there's still a points championship so everybody right. is still claiming the normal points championship. In fact, Superbikes we're going to talk about in a minute. British Superbikes have got a similar system, which I don't actually know how quite how it works. We'll come to that in about two minutes' time. Um, so yes, you get through the plan, but only those only now sixteen drivers can win the championship. There is still a points champion separate which is already, I think, Chase Elliott can't be caught. Um, so, yeah, so it goes from 16 to 12 to 8 and then to 4. So it's good stuff. So it was, good a, stuff. So it was an entertaining race, but because of the weather. <laughs> it, was a, it was a classy Daytona, I mean, Daytona luck fest, crash fest. <laughs> so um, 
Next up, let's go back to the UK. Back uh, to the UK. Two fabulous weekends. Obviously, two crashes that sadly have seen those those guys hospitalised. Who our best wishes are with. I, I I haven't. I didn't look at the genet. I didn't look either. I did, but the Janetta one, I, you know, purposely didn't want to see it because people were just saying how horrific it was. Um, yeah. Paul O'Neill was saying how awful it was. Colin White um, and Mike Brown. Um, but um, but I mean, it was a weird crash. I mean, it, it was a, the barriers all worked. I mean, it was just he, he went one of the it was Mike Brown, I think, went wide and came across the track and took Colin into the barriers halfway down the straight. Um, so it was, and, and unfortunately, Colin rolled over and over, and that's what would have caused. Yeah, I think he's got some cracked vertebrae and some, you know, there's no, no life threatening injuries to any of these guys, as far as we know. So anyway, but it was usually it was it was a Ford Fest, the Napa boys that have been sort of you know. They were always the best drivers. We thought they might dominate the championship this year when they came out in their lovely blue and yellow tie. We thought they might sponsor a podcast like us. But we don't. Napa. 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 That, Napa. That died a we love you, really, Napa. We still love you, Napa. Um, so Dan Camish was the Napa man on, you know, Ash Sutton's teammate. He was actually the fastest of the forwards. He led from pole in race one uh, and won that from... Um, who was second? The Vauxhall was second. No, not the Honda of... Scotsman, Flash, Gordon, um, <laughs> and uh, but um, you put me off now. What so, happened? You off? Why am I? I'm just listening. But Ash Sutton was third. But Ash is the leader of the two of the championship. So there was a bit of driver's orders in race two because they they got ahead of Shed and Gordon Shed, who was second. They got ahead of Shed, so they're running first and second in race two. And Dan actually backed off and let Ash by to win the second race of the weekend to put him up on top of the points by the end of the day. So it was a real big day for, for the Fords. Turk and Turk. Um, the right, the Kirk has picked up some more points. He was second in the reverse grid race, which was won by Josh Cook. Josh Cook's the, the Honda Thruxton genius that I think won the two races at the beginning of the season, both the opening two races. Uh, and he was second on the grid, but got taken out at the first corner in a bit of a melee. Um, and he battled back all weekend to win the reverse Grimway. So he's still in the championship hunt. Um, but now it, it's, it's um, Sutton leads by about four points from Turkington. There's still Tom Ingram, Jake Hill. No, um, Turkington leads, but you mean overall? Turkington well, the points, leads. Well, that's what someone else said. But then I saw 311. Been, he's, Turkington's got 311. Ash Sutton's got 305. Uh, I saw then, another points table in on one of the researches. They had, yeah, had uh, maybe it was after maybe it was after round the two races. They hadn't yeah. added the third points. In. Turkington is six points above Sutton. Then Ingram is eight points behind, and then Jake Hill's five points behind him. So it's and it's, Josh it's, Cook still, I think, with a chance. <clears throat> yes, with two, with, with two races to go. So that's you, really hotting up. You say that, but Josh Cook's on two hundred and forty-three points, and Colin Turk's on three hundred and eleven. So there's a quite a big old gap. Um, it was 40 points for a win, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know how many points. It was 40 yeah, points for two wins. Turkington's Mr. Consistent. He's always, always there. And yeah. Ashton, they're always, always going to pull in points. It's, it's yeah, I, like... I said at the beginning, I did say at the beginning of the year, Tom Ingram, I liked that. I mean, it was my tip to win. About time Tom had a, had a run to the finish and win. And then Jake, Hill. Won... Jake Hill would return the books. That would be great to see a sort of privateer being done. I think he's the factory car, but he's a different. And then where do we want Ash Sutton to go? Because he's wasted. And he's not wasted the BTCC because it's an amazing thing. But you... Le Mans, he wants to, I want him to see him in Le Mans. I want to see him out there. Yeah, amazing driver. And at Thruxton, just out of, um, out of interest, what's it like if you want to go around Thruxton in, a, say, an M2 or something like that? Is it? Is I wouldn't it know. Well, apparently there's a, there's a passenger experience. If you want to experience what it's like to go around Thruxton... Some bloke called Tiff Needell. There's a Tiff taxi. You can, you can, good Christmas gift. You can, you can live Truxton. Good, good idea, Paul. I'm glad you reminded me of that. The, the problem with that is you don't go, it's the fastest circuit in the UK, but you don't go straight that often. You go sideways. <laughs> it's quite an experience. You should do it. If you're a Tiff fan or if you're just a motor racing fan, you should do it. It's very good. Um, so moving on to British Superbikes at Cadwell. Yeah, I don't know too much about how the races went, although it's obviously if you were at Campbell Park, you would have had a wonderful day. Um, but Bradley Ray uh, was the only Yamaha. The, the, the three that dominated Thruxton, we talk about Thruxton, uh, championship with Jason O'Halloran and Tara McKenzie, were off pace all weekend. So Bradley Ray was the only Yamaha that won a race, which makes it probably the first time this year, I'd imagine. Uh, Bradley won the first race with O'Halloran fourth and McKenzie 11th. But the next two races were both run by Danny Buckle on a BMW. Had a wonderful uh, two races. Um, Bradley was second in both of them, so his points must be getting closer to a Halloran's now. 
So it was a, a nice change up at Campbell Park with um, with Danny Bucken doing two races and putting the Yamaha boys to, to the torch for a change. Uh, and of course, uh, best wishes to Dan Jones with you yeah, again for the bike boys. Yes, absolutely. So quite an exciting weekend, really. Formula well, I enjoyed it. I've enjoyed Formula it. Formula One brilliant, absolute brilliant. But it's boring <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm so bored now. It's just it's the Mac show, isn't it? It's just how how many is he going to win? He's going to destroy the record of 13. I'll tell you another. Wait thing till about- George Russell. Wait till George Russell gets a car as good as yours, Max. We'll have another British you talent mean, to battle you. But you say that. I think Lewis is still uh, a bit. Good, he is I know. still a little still. bit quicker than George. Um, yeah. 13 years ago, Honda pulled out of Formula One. And they went back in and Braun won. And now 13 years later, because they pulled out of Formula 1 again last year, and then they went back with Red Bull at the last yeah. minute, and they're going to win another championship. They should no, do that more often. <laughs> we forgot about Audi. We Audi, I was just going to say. Gossip. Uh, Audi, that, yeah. We, we, didn't, we didn't mention it, because I'm not that excited about it, really. They're just putting an engine. I mean, it's not a new team. I don't know whether... We, there's so little detail where they sort of tease something. They're in, but will it be called the Audi? Well, I don't know. I said, well, of course, it's the Alfa Romeo at the moment, isn't it? If they're talking about going to that team. I tell you, Johnny but Smith some... is, is your ex-colleague, is a brilliant car guy, just an all-round car guy. Um, I don't necessarily agree with all his views sometimes. He's got, <laughs> I'm into the supercars, he's into the EVs and stuff. But he said it perfectly. He said, Audi, why would Audi do this? Their heritage is you know, rallying and just innovate. Just Innovation, just, yeah. yeah. Four-wheel drive for rally, diesels for Le Mans. Didn't like that, mind you. But anyway, diesels. For, and yeah, they can't, they can't be innovative in Formula One, but it's just having their name now with this little bubble, the bubble that's growing with all this money and it's going all around the Middle East. And it's just, you know, I think Karim Chandok sort of point, pointed, you know, it's, it's eyeballing. What was that weird word he used? Something about they're joining the biggest eyeballing motor racing series on the planet to he called you have, a grumpy have old their man name. as well by the way yeah. <laughs> that's because I'm going to go at him for this you know eye boarding because he's he's, he's, he's going to be president of the FIA I think Caro and that's where he's aged he's, he's, getting, he's getting too woke so I always try to wind him up if I can okay so this week we're going to find out what's going on with Piastri Alpine McLaren saga coming up much more and then, exciting then we're going to watch Max Verstappen exactly. lead another race from start to finish one hand he'll probably wave at this Dutch crowd every <laughs> every lap when he goes by I mean, I mean, he, he'll just walk away with that but he is um, a different driver I don't know whether because he hasn't got that uh, competition well because he's he, in the best car yeah, he, yeah competition he had last year with Lewis um, just intense well, he, incredible he was having to drive his Red Bull you know on the limit every yeah. moment to beat Lewis. I mean, that's why now, you know, he was just he was just so on the edge all the time that he made mistakes and clattered a few people a few times. But now he's got that car that, you know, justifies his talent. I mean, maybe, I who hope, maybe the Mercedes will work around Zandvoort. Zandvoort's a bit of a go-kart track. Again, not good for overtaking, so going to be tricky. I think Zandvoort will be OK for the Ferraris. Then we go on to Monza, and I think Red Bull again is just going to blitz it. But you say that, Ferrari just always have a, an amazing habit of throwing it away anyway. <sighs> Carlos Sainz celebrating so much that his third place, I would have been embarrassed. I would have been really super embarrassed uh, from pole position and just absolutely not even anywhere near on the pace. But... Um, but yeah, we can Leclerc. Always... Imagine Leclerc's thoughts when he came out of the pits to go for fastest lap, but Alonso slotted in front of him as he came out of the pit. Like he must have said, what, what, uh, what, so, what, much, so much to talk about. Next, thanks uh, for joining this week. Next wait week. Wait a minute. Don't oh, forget IndyCar, Portland. Oh. That's on F1. So if you watch Formula One, you can stay on. It's not, again, not the best tracks for over Tokyo, Portland. There's a big chicane where they normally crash a lot in the first restarts. MotoGP's San Marino Grand Prix around Misano. So lots of MotoGP fans this weekend. And the NASCAR playoffs begin at Darlington, baby. I'm going to watch NASCAR next week. Promise. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining, guys. See you next week. Cheers all. Bye. Cheers.